Hey everybody, Brother Josh here. We're picking up on part two of A Joyful Noise, a study of the Bible and music. And I'm gonna give us just a quick rehash of what we went over the last time and then we'll go into what we're gonna learn this time. All right, last time we learned that music and song originated with God and it was given to the angels and the angels sung in the presence of God and for God to praise him. We also see that man picked it up from God or the angels, for that is the origination of music and song. And we see that their godly praise and music also was perverted and changed by man into worldly secular music, that is music that does not contain the praise and the honor of God in it. So now, the next piece that we're going to go into is the influence of music. And I want to be very clear on this, is that music has influence. So let me read our opening scripture here, Psalms 95 and 1. It says, O come, let us sing unto the Lord, let us sing a joyful noise unto the rock of our salvation. Amen. Now, Influence means this, literally a flowing into or on. That's what influence means. And it could be a flowing in or a flowing into or on a power or force whose operation is invisible and is only known by its effects. So when we see influence is what it is doing is that it is an invisible force exerting power on something. This is influence. Now, uh, Jesus gave us a good example of this in John 3 and 8, and I'm going to read it to you in the ESV. He says this, The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. And so <clears throat> Jesus gives us the example of the wind. Now, we've all been outside on a windy day. And though we cannot visibly see wind, it is invisible. We can definitely hear it when it goes past our ears. And not only can we hear it, we can see its effect, its power upon nature. Okay? And that power is so strong, wind, is that it can topple houses and it can destroy buildings. It can be that strong. And it is the wind's influence that does these things. Now, so you don't have to see it, but you can see its effects. Now, just like wind has influence, so does music and song. And this influence can be good or this influence can be bad. Music is comprised of lyrics and melody. Melody is musical sounds. That's what, that's what it's comprised of. The lyrics provide the idea or thought the song is conveying. The melody produces the emotional response. And let me tell you something. Is music has the influence of emotion. Let's look here. Anytime you sit down and you are watching TV or maybe you, you're wherever and you hear, dun 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 what, what, what do you think about? You think Jaws. And that music builds tension and that music builds fear. You see what I'm saying? So you need to understand is that music has influence on us, is that music evokes emotion in us. We can sit and we can listen to the masters as they play classical music, Bach and Beethoven, and some of those songs can lift your spirits, your emotions to the heights, and some of them can bring them down into the valleys because of the emotion that the music provokes. Now, lyrics are words. These are the song the, the words that go to the actual melody or the music. Just like a conversation one may have, words produce mental images, emotions, ideas, and motivation. So understand that, is that 
Words produce mental images. They produce emotions, ideas, and motivation. Well, you say, well, what's an example of that, Brother Josh? Well, let me give you a good example. Is that many times there are football games out there being played, and we'll see that a team is not doing very well in the first half. So when they go into the locker room to take that short break, what does the coach do? He gives a pep talk. And he sits there, and with his speech, what he does is he raises the spirits, the emotions of the team, and the team comes back out after that break energized. They come back out of that break ready to win. You see what I'm saying? So, and a lot of times, they win the game after that because of words that were spoken, okay? So, what we're dealing with here when we look at music is that we're seeing emotional power through the music, and we're seeing motivation and ideas through the lyrics. Now, some ideas and mental images and motivations are good, and some are sinful. Do you get that? Is that many times that the things we say with our mouth can edify and build up somebody, and the things we say with our mouth can hurt and offend people. And music is the same way, is that when you are hearing the lyrics, it's giving mental images and ideas and motivation in you so that you may act upon that or receive healing or, or a good feeling from it. All right, let's look at Philippians 4, 8 and 9. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So the Bible is telling us is that the things that the Christian is supposed to listen to, the things that the Christian is supposed to think upon are good things that the word of God condones, okay? That the word of God says are all right. Listen to this, Ephesians 5, 22 through 4. Now, here's some things that we aren't to think upon, some things that we aren't supposed to say. It says, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and hath given for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Think about that. Rather, giving of thanks. So, what we're seeing here is that there are certain attitudes, certain beliefs, certain things that we are to have in our hearts and that we are to fill our souls with, and certain things that we are to shun. Listen to Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, which is Satan, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation, our conversation in times past in the desires of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So there is godly talk, there is godly conversation, there are godly thoughts, there is a, a, a godly exuberance to your soul and to your spirit, but yes, there are sinful thoughts, sinful motivations, and a sinful exuberance to your spirit. Now, since music is comprised of lyric and melody that are words and music, the lyrics of music can influence to uplift, brighten spirits, and to praise and magnify God. But also, music can influence people to sin, to darken moods, and to glorify and praise bad people and behavior. It works both ways. All right. So 
you say, well, okay, well, Brother John, I hear you. I don't know that I'm necessarily tracking with you here, but you're saying that music influences people to do good and that music can influence people to do bad. I, I'm, I'm so strong in my spirit. I'm just so mature that that has no effect on me. I beg to differ. And I'm going to show you here a little bit later where it does have an effect on you. But before we go there, I want to give you some examples of music influencing people. All right. Now, people who are into music, they take on the persona of their favorite singer or band. Now, they, these are people, they are, you know, they're into music, you know. And so let me use an example here. Back in the 70s, there was a band called the Grateful Dead, okay? And the Grateful Dead had followers that were called deadheads. You got that? Deadheads. And what they would do is that they would get together and they would dress alike and they would have the same ideas. They would have the same motivations and they would follow this band from state to state to state, fellowshipping with one another in the spirit of the band. Because the band was playing music they liked, the music motivated them, the music moved them, and that's what they enjoyed. Now, the culture of the Grateful Dead was this, LSD, tie-dye shirts, bus travel to concerts, and heathenistic behavior. And all of this influenced the people who followed that man. So think about that. Let me read you a little something. I did a little research on this, and I'm sure you're familiar with their, their logo right there. That's the Deadhead logo. But listen to what uh, this man here says. He wrote an article, and... Um, it says, some deadheads use the term X factor to describe the intangible element that elevates mere performance into something higher. Publicist and Jerry Garcia biographer Blair Jackson stated that shows were the sacrament, rich and full of blissful, transcendent musical moments that moved the body and enriched the soul. Do you see that? He's saying, this is, this is not necessarily a Christian here. This is a publicist and a speaker for Jerry Garcia, the head of the Grateful Dead, the lead singer. Jackson takes this further, citing drummer Mickey Hart as saying, the Grateful Dead weren't in the music business. They were in the transportation business. Jackson relates this to the deadhead phenomenon directly by saying, for many deadheads, the band was a medium that facilitated experiencing other planes of consciousness and tapping into deep spiritual wells that were usually the province of organized religion. So he's saying that this is taking place of religion. They got people high whether those people were on drugs or not. It was times like these that the band and the audience would become one. The Grateful Dead and the Deadheads were all in the same state of mind. Y'all, I didn't write this. this. This was written on Wikipedia. Uh, if you want to go look it up, you go right ahead. But this is the publicist of that band talking about what the effects of the music were at those concerts. Now, in my day, we had something a little similar, not as uh, fanatical as Deadheads, but uh, there was the, a band called the Insane Clown Posse, which was ridiculous, a, a bunch of just nonsense. But there were people who would dress up like these band members. They would put on makeup and they would wear dark clothes and they would go to these concerts and they would call themselves Juggalos. You see what I'm saying? So I don't want to hear from people that music doesn't influence, okay? Because music does have an influence. Let's go to 2 Peter 2, 6 through 8, and I'm going to bring this to a close right here. 
And the next time we get into, uh, into this, we're going to go more into the positive influence that gospel music or music that lifts up God has on the individual. Second Peter 2, 6 through 8. Listen to this. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Notice that. Just Lot, he was a just man, but he was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. That word vexed there means oppressed, harassed, or it warring down by seeing and hearing their sinful deeds and actions. Okay? So music has influence. Music provokes emotion. Music gives you a motivation, okay? And so what we see is that music can be used for good. That is, it can be used to build you up spiritually, to edify you, to give you proper motivation in the Lord, or music can be used to your detriment. It can be used to excite you, to move you, to, to give you emotions that bring you closer to the world and to the ways of Satan. Now, we're going to stop right there, and next week we're going to go into the good use of music. We're going to go into how it helps the Christian, how it helps the believer to be stronger in Christ. This is Brother Josh saying goodbye. I hope you enjoyed it.